Hi everybody, how are you? I hope you are all right. Today we are going to deal with the unification of Germany. It happened in 1871. What you have to understand is that before 1871, Germany was not Germany. There were different states that uh, belonged to the Germanic Confederation, but it was not called Germany. So we are going to deal with this process of unification in Germany. We are going to talk about the Franco-Prussian War, which was vital for the unification of Germany. Also, we are going to talk about a man of diabolical cleverness, Otto von Bismarck. He was the Minister Prince of Prussia. Then we are going to talk about two important territories that France lost in the Franco-Prussian War and were taken by Germany, Alsace and Lorraine, which paved the way for the growth of uh, Germany during the Industrial Revolution because they were very rich territories in mineral resources. Also, we are going to talk about our friend Louis Napoleon Bonaparte or Louis, uh, Napoleon III. Remember that he came after Louis Philippe in France. Uh, we are also going to talk about Denmark. Yes, Denmark. Two important territories that were taken by Otto von Bismarck uh, in, in a kind of war. And we are going to develop some important um, connections between Otto von Bismarck and the families in Venetia because he made a secret arrangement. So what is the historical context of Germany before unification, that is to say, before 1871? First of all, as I told you before, Germany was composed of different states. It was not unified. If you remember, since 1815, from the Congress of Vienna, it was that Germany uh, regained, or the, the Confederation regained, because it was not Germany, this status. Since 1815, the German states, together with Austria, had constituted the 38 members of the Germanic Confederation. So, remember, the Germanic Confederation was composed of the German states plus the German provinces in Austria. So, Austria was also involved in this uh, Germanic Confederation and they formed the 38 states, which were the most important ones, Prussia and Austria. You can see here, in the south, you've got Austria, and in the north, Prussia, next to Denmark. And notice Schleswig, it's important because we are going to talk about that. So, uh, this is the German Confederation before unification, Der Deutsche Bund, that is the name in German, and we've got full members, associate members, and associate regions. As you can see, there were some colonies also in Southwest Africa, and there were uh, international cities in which the Confederation has advisory status, as for example, uh, in, in this part of what nowadays is Italy, We've got uh, some parts of Switzerland with Zurich and Luxembourg as well. Well, the most important, uh, notice that the capital of Prussia was Berlin, and the most important states were Prussia, as you can see, as you can see, sorry, and Austria. Well, what is the historical context of the unification of Germany? the revolutions in France. As you remember, there were two revolutions in France, the ones we studied with the evolution of democracy in France. One in 1830 to overthrow uh, Charles X, and the other one in 1848 to overthrow Louis Philippe. Well, especially the last one, 
in 1848, the February Revolution, remember, touched off a series of revolt in Central Europe, especially in Austria and in the Germanic Confederation. What did people want? They wanted more rights. They saw the example in France and they wanted to get rid of that divine right monarchies because citizens wanted to enjoy, for example, universal manhood suffrage among other rights. Well, in Austria, there were mobs of students and working men who forced the resignation of Prince Metternich. Do you remember Metternich? well from the congress of vienna well and in the germanic confederation liberals and nationalists convoked a great national convention in frankfurt because they longed for unification there was a growing sentiment for unification why did this happen because of the consequences of the revolutionary movements in France, especially the February Revolution of 1848. As you can see, uh, this is uh, uh, a picture of uh, people wanted uh, unification in Germany, trying to deal with, the, with this uh, national convention in Frankfurt. Well, what about the German states? Each of the states of the Germanic Confederation uh, was governed by princes. Yes, was ruled by a prince, and they called it their semi-independence jealously. That is to say, there was jealousy uh, among them, and, uh, well, there was no cooperation they belonged to the Germanic Confederation, but each state was semi-independent, so there was not uh, this uh, unification that some people wanted in Germany. This growing sentiment for unification was very important, especially uh, in Prussia, and I will explain why Prussia uh, in the following uh, slides. Uh, as I told you, they convoked a national convention in Frankfurt. The main objective of this national convention was to draft a constitution for the unification of Germany. We are talking about May 1848. But I told you at the beginning of this presentation that unification was achieved in 1871. What happened in this national convention? Well, first of all, as I told you, the, the revolutions in France, especially the Federal Revolution of 1848, touched off this growing sentiment in liberalists and nationalists who saw great benefits if Germany or if the, nation, uh, if the Germanic Confederation was unified into a single state. The liberalists saw the benefits in the field of commerce. Why? It was clear because if Germany or if the Confederation was unified, commerce would flourish. If they were a single country, for example, they wouldn't have to pay import or exports because as the Germanic Confederation was composed of different states, sometimes selling products from one state to the other implied importation or uh, exports. So they had to pay a fee and in that way they, 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 they didn't grow. So that is why they, they thought that if they were a single country, commerce would flourish. That is the point of view of liberalists. Remember capitalism, liberalism that came from England as well. And nationalists, that is to say, the, the, the most romantic uh, people in Germany, uh, longed for this unification because they demanded a cultural and racial unity. They were absolutely convinced that if Germany was unified, this cultural and racial unity would be uh, achieved for the benefit of the growth of Germany. But what happened in this convention? Well, the convention was a failure. Why? 
The convention was composed by high-minded delegates from all the states of the confederation. When they uh, gathered, the main question was if Austria should be invited. Remember that Austria had German provinces that belonged to the confederation and Austrian provinces as well that did not belong to the confederation. So the question was if the whole Austria would be invited to this uh, convention. When it was decided that only the German provinces of Austria should be invited, the government of Austria ordered its delegates to come home. So, this was the, the convention in, in Frankfurt when the Austrian provinces were not invited well, the convention failed. Uh, the, obviously, unification was not achieved and uh, the Germanic Confederation continued working as uh, it used to work before this national convention, which was a failure. So, why Prussia? Why do we talk about Prussia when we deal with the uh, German unification. Uh, first of all, remember, Prussia was a more, the most, I would say, the most liberal state of the Germanic Confederation. Uh, Prussia had a king and a minister prince who was a kind of prime minister. So some of the features of the uh, constitutional monarchy in uh, Great Britain. This man was the king and this man was the minister prince. We are talking of Wilhelm I, in English William I, and Otto von Bismarck. He was the minister prince. Pay attention to Otto von Bismarck because he plays a very important role in this unification especially because he always wanted to see uh, or to be seen as the victim and he was a man of diabolical cleverness. Well, as I told you before, look at the mem. Why can't I hold all these countries with there are a lot of memes you know, on the internet that uh, describe uh, Otto von Bismarck. He was the man that unified Germany, but at the same time he wanted to incorporate more countries or to have influence on other countries. The unification was achieved by him, achieved by Otto von Bismarck, who was born in 1815 and died in 1898, and uh, well, he unified Germany. He was, as I told you, the minister prince of Prussia and he followed steps of almost diabolical cleverness. Do you remember Austria? Remember that Austria was not accepted, the whole Austria, in uh, the National Convention in Frankfurt. And when the delegates uh, left the convention, the convention failed. Why? Because Austria was also a very important state. So Otto von Bismarck thought how can I eliminate Austria but playing the role of victim? That is to say, uh, he had, Prussia had the chance to declare war against Austria and Prussia had a very important uh, army and obviously they would have uh, won the war against Austria. But Otto von Bismarck didn't want to be seen as the one who started the war but he wanted to play the role of victim. That is to say, he wanted Austria to declare war to Prussia. So, what did he do? Uh, he looked at Denmark, and there were two states in Denmark, two territories, two provinces, as you can see there, Schleswig and Holstein, Schleswig and Holstein. Remember that the W in German is pronounced V, and all uh, the E, I uh, are pronounced I. That is to say, it's Schleswig and Holstein. 
Well, there were two territories in, in Denmark that uh, were inhabited by a lot of German people. So, in order to eliminate Austria, Otto von Bismarck invited Austria to participate in this war against uh, Denmark to recover the territories of Schleswig and Holstein. Obviously, the idea that Otto von Bismarck had was that Austria, remember, declared war on Prussia. Before uh, inviting Austria, which finally accepted the invitation, he had secretly arranged with some families in Venetia and promised that if he won the war against Austria, Austria would have to leave uh, the territories that uh, uh, Austria managed in Venetia. So, obviously, the war, wo the war was a walk in the park for Prussia and Austria, they defeated Denmark and they recovered Schleswig and Holstein. What happened? What happened when they recovered Schleswig and Holstein? Well, Otto von Bismarck decided not to divide the spoils of the war as Austria had been promised before the war started. So Austria got angry and Austria declared war against Prussia. So the main objective was achieved. Austria declared war on Prussia. So, um, of course, Otto von Bismarck played the role of victim and it was a piece of cake for Prussia to defeat Austria because Prussia was more powerful. So all of the sudden, Prussia had already incorporated Schleswig and Holstein and swallowed Austria as well. So Prussia was becoming more and more powerful. This is the North German Confederation before unification. So after the war, the German Confederation was dissolved. Yeah? And a North German Confederation, that was the new name, was formed. But it contained all the northern states of the main river controlled by Prussia. What, what was the problem? As you can see in yellow, the southern states were still independent. Baden, Bavaria, Württemberg and Hessen remained independent. So Germany could not be unified. Although they had military alliances with, Prus with Prussia, they were independent. So we have, after the war against Denmark, the formation of the North German Confederation, but still Germany was not unified. Which were the democratic features of uh, the North Germanic Confederation? Remember that people wanted more rights, so there was a constitution, and you can see there one night, Otto von Bismarck, the Prime Minister, of, uh, or the Minister Prince of Prussia boasted that he wrote the Constitution in only one night. So, the Northern Germanic Confederation had a Constitution in which there was a King of Prussia who was made hereditary president and there had to be a parliament. The parliament had two houses. The upper house, which was composed of the representatives of the governments of the different states of this confederation and the lower house with universal manhood suffrage. So as you can see, there was a king, there was a legislative power and universal manhood suffrage. So this confederation adopted some of the uh, democratic features that people claimed after the 1848 revolution in France. So, as you saw before, we have the Northern Confederation, but the Southern states were still independent. So Otto von Bismarck thought of a plan. How can I incorporate the Southern states and become a unified country? The last step was this, the Franco-Prussian War. Who was the Emperor of France? Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon III, who was involved 
in uh, in a campaign in Italy, Mexico, remember his costly war. And this was the final step, the last step for the unification of Germany. So from the very beginning, you can uh, think, uh, you have an idea that it was Prussia which defeated France in this Franco-Prussian war. Let's talk about the development, development of the war. Uh, the idea that Otto von Bismarck had to start a war was that if he started a war against France, he would uh, wake up this German nationalism, especially in the southern states that we saw, Bavaria and Württemberg, Uh, which were independent and they did not belong to the confederation. So with this German nationalism, Otto von Bismarck thought that Germany could be unified if he defeated France in the Franco-Prussian war. But we are going to talk about Spain. Yes, Spain, because There was a Spanish Revolution in 1868. The, the Queen Isabel II had been overthrown and the throne of Spain was uh, empty. They, uh, the government or the leaders of uh, the government of Spain were looking for the succession. And they invited Prince Leopold. So who was Leopold? This prince belonged to the Hohenzollern family. Who were the Hohenzollern? Well, they were, they were the ones who governed uh, Prussia. For example, uh, Wilhelm I, the king of Prussia, belonged to the Hohenzollern family. So when uh, Prince Leopold was invited to sit at the throne of Spain, The first one who said no and who claimed that it was that this uh, succession was absolutely unfair was Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte uh, rejected this possibility and did not give support to the accession of Prince Leopold to the Spanish throne. Why? Is this important and what is the relationship with Germany? Remember that Prince Leopold belonged to the Hohenzollern family, who was the family that governed Prussia and were looking for the unification of Germany. Uh, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte believed that if Prince Leopold sat down at the throne of Spain, he would be surrounded by the Hohenzollern family in Germany and in Spain. So that is why he said no. This triggered the beginning of the war. The fact that uh, France rejected the possibility of Leopold in the Spanish throne was one of the most important uh, key uh, for the uh, beginning of the war. What did Otto von Bismarck think in order to play the role of the victim again of this diabolical cleverness we were talking about. He forged a telegram as if it was an insult. This is the Ems telegram. What happened? Well, um, the French ambassador and uh, the king Wilhelm I met at Ems in order to arrange the fact that Leopold could uh, sit in the throne of Spain. But as I told you before, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte said no, so uh, the telegram from Louis Napoleon Bonaparte to the King of Prussia, to Wilhelm I, was handed out by the French ambassador. When the King Wilhelm I received the telegram, he gave the telegram to Otto von Bismarck and uh, Otto von Bismarck forged that telegram and uh, made it appear as if the king of Prussia, that is to say Wilhelm I, 
had insulted the French ambassador when he received uh, the telegram. So when Louis Napoleon Bonaparte got to know uh, that supposedly uh, Wilhelm I had insulted the French ambassador, France declared war to Prussia. So that was not true at all, but Otto von Bismarck, who wanted always to play the role of victim, managed to arrange this fact and cheated on uh, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, who declared war to Prussia. Why is this important? The question is, could Prussia declare war on France? Yes, of course. But remember, Otto von Bismarck wanted to be seen as the victim. And if France declared war on Prussia, the southern states of the Germanic Confederation, which were close to France, would desperately ask for Prussia's help and would join the Confederation to unify, uh, finally, Germany. As you can see in the map, this uh, Baden, Württemberg, Bavaria, especially the red ones, which were more important than the others, well, wanted to join the Confederation when France declared war to Prussia. These southern states uh, were not as strong as Prussia. Remember that they had military alliances, as I explained before with Prussia, and were not strong enough to face France in the war. So that is why they claimed to join the Confederation. Which is the outcome of the war? Well, Prussia crushed France, definitely, because Napoleon III, remember, as we studied in the uh, evolution of democracy in France, uh, was defeated in this, in this war, was taken prisoner, but Otto von Bismarck was not happy with this. Remember, we studied that Napoleon I, that is to say the real Napoleon, wanted to conquer more and more and more. <clears throat> His nephew wanted to conquer more and more and more in France. And in Germany, it happened the same. Because Otto von Bismarck was not just happy with taking uh, Alsace and Lorraine, which went to Germany. He wanted more. So, uh, when Prussia crushed France uh, in the Battle of Sedan, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte was arrested and Germany invaded Paris. Yes, they captured Paris. It was not the first time in World War II when Hitler took Paris. No. Otto von Bismarck in the Franco-Prussian War also captured Paris. And uh, it was obviously uh, a, a, a movement uh, that obliged the French to sign a treaty. The treaty was the Treaty of Frankfurt, and by means of this treaty, Alsace and Lorraine, which were rich territories in mineral resources that belonged to France, went to the hands of Germany. And that is why Germany started to grow, besides uh, the invention of the steel, also as the most important industrial country in Europe. So, one of the most important outcomes of this war has, has a consequence in the, <clears throat> of course, the Industrial Revolution, but most importantly, Alsace and Lorraine were the main, one of the main long-term causes of World War I because it uh, started a feeling of resentment from the French to the German which we are going to call the revenge movement that we are going to study in World War I. But why did the revenge movement uh, begin? Because of Alsace and Lorraine. Germany was um, finally unified. As we said before, this patriotic enthusiasm in the southern states First, because they didn't want to face the war alone, and after the war, because Prussia defeated France, uh, made them ask to unify or to join the Confederation. So when Bavaria, Württemberg um, were uh, decided to unify the Confederation, Germany 
became a single country. Uh, this government had two democratic features, but you won't believe it, but as I told you before, uh, Otto von Bismarck captured Paris and the, the ceremony uh, of the accession to the throne of the German Emperor Bar Wilhelm I took place in the Palace of Versailles, yes, the house of the Bourbon dynasty. So it was deeply humiliating for the French that Otto von Bismarck and the German government organized the ceremony in the Palace of Versailles. As I told you before, only two democratic features uh, were um, highlighted in this new government of Germany, 1871. Uh, they, they were universal manhood suffrage and the legislative uh, body, that is to say, the parliament. Wilhelm I became the emperor of Germany, the first emperor of Germany, which was finally unified. And Otto von Bismarck was the imperial chancellor of uh, Germany. So finally, the man who played the role of victim with diabolical steps mm, achieved not only the unification of Germany, but also he became the imperial chancellor of Germany. So Germany finally was unified in 1871. Well, uh, I hope you could understand the unification of Germany the evolution of democracy in Great Britain and also in France that we have already studied. Next week, uh, if you want, we can meet uh, uh, live on Google Meet so as to discuss some important aspects of this uh, uh, unification, especially the ones uh, connected with Germany and France.